One of the most interesting things about fashion are its periodic trend cycles. From the rise of the Dunk Low in 2020 to the fall of the Ultra Boost in 2018, there have been numerous shifts in the cultural currency. And in today's video, I'm going to give you the best and the worst trends of 2022. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do. And as a disclaimer, this video is merely my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right. It doesn't mean my opinion is above other people's opinions. It's just that, an opinion. My aim is not to offend anyone, but I might do so in the process. So if you get offended, this is my apology beforehand. I want you to know that this channel is all about uplifting others, encouraging others, and creating a positive environment as it relates to fashion. All right, all the nice CDs out of the way. Let's get into it. Let's start with footwear for the year so far. Overall, I think New Balance as it relates to sneakers specifically has taken over the year for 2022. And what I mean by taken over is that New Balance essentially is the brand to have on your feet for 2022 as it relates to sneakers. When I'm scrolling on my Explore page or on my For You page, it doesn't take me but a mere moment to come across a pair of New Balances. And for me, I have two divisive thoughts as it relates to the current Current trend of wearing New Balance. Let's start with the bad and then work our way to the good. Now this might be a little bit spicy. Okay, here we go. I think that the New Balance 550 has essentially become what the Nike Dunk Low was in 2020 and 2021. And that bothers me a little bit. From an aesthetic standpoint, I resonate with the design language of the 550 over the Dunk Low because of its heritage in basketball and its overall vintage aesthetic. Vintage aesthetic. <laughs> but what I don't like is the oversaturation of the model, kind of like what happened with Dunks. And I don't mean oversaturation as in accessibility because I want everyone who wants a pair of 550s to have a pair of 550s. I mean oversaturation as it relates to duplicating colorways, poor quality control, and the feeling that New Balance is just milking the crap out of the 550 silhouette. I think Rose Anvil did a fantastic job illuminating the quality of a 550 in comparison to other shoes that he also compares the quality of. He cuts the shoe open, he looks at the materials, he tests the materials, and he gives you a more kind of scientific way to look at quality rather than, oh, this feels really good, right? And I think after watching his video, it really changed my opinion on the model. Yes, I still have a pair of 550s, actually, or I guess they're 650s. Let me go get them for you. I still have a pair of 650s right here, and I plan to keep this pair as a memorable, as a memorable? I plan to keep this pair as a as a memory to the era that was the New Balance 550 because this era will end and there will be another proverbial it sneaker. And this is not even the it sneaker. This is like a cop out. <laughs> and I don't want you to get it twisted. I still aesthetically love the way the 550 looks and I would wear them every day if I had no other options because I think they look that good. But it's difficult. I talked about this before in other videos, as a product begins to no longer resonate with you as an individual, as a, as a true fan, and it becomes associated with something that doesn't necessarily exemplify you as a customer, then you start to kind of lean away from that product just a little bit. And that's how I feel about the New Balance 550. I think it's a great shoe model, but it's been oversaturated. It's been talked about a ton, a ton, a ton, and I'm responsible for that as well, but I think it's a bit oversaturated. That's just my opinion. That's the bad of New Balance footwear. That's what I have to say about New Balance being the proverbial it brand of 2022. Sorry, I was holding in a burp right there. <laughs> the good comes in the other releases that New Balance has had in the year. I'm a big fan of New Balance. So when Nike Dunks were the it sneaker, I was kind of ringing the bell as in saying, I don't really like this shoe. Like I don't really want to participate in this trend cycle. But with New Balance is, I'm a bit more keen on them. And so what I've liked about this year is the drops that they've had. Those that include the likes of, you know, Jown New Balance collaborations, the 2002R collaborations, Joe Fresh Goods, Brian Giles, the Teddy Santis, and, and so many others. We could talk about so many New Balance collaborations and Made in USA pairs and efforts that, you know, we could, we could fill the entire video. I think being a fan of New Balance in 2022, especially if you were a fan beforehand, if you knew about them a little bit before all of this kind of this hype train came, then I feel like you feel even better about New Balance. Balance. Or maybe you're in a different position. Maybe you feel worse about New Balance because it's become 
too much of an it brand either way i'm happy with new balance overall i would say it's a net positive and i really love the sneaker kind of footwear cycle we're in as it relates to new balance being the the arbiter of footwear culture sneaker culture <laughs> next let's touch on the current meal mint do you know what a meal mint is have you watched my last video if you don't know what a meal mint is it's this idea that mules clog slip-ons not the best but they are dethroning essentially sneakers in some capacity but i think it's safe to say that in 2022 while we do have new balances we still have dunk we still have all these other forms of footwear this year has really been defined in a lot of ways by the explosion of different variants of footwear and that's what the mule mint is about from mules like the birkenstock boston to loafers clogs foam runners and foam sneakers and everything in between i think this aspect of 2022 fashion this trend is beautiful I really like it. Some people think that this is a very US specific thing. I got a lot of comments about that in my other video. Other people think that they don't really care for mules, clogs, or other type of slip on footwear. They think it's kind of ridiculous to go outside the house wearing these things. I, for one, am a huge fan. So, I mean, as you can see, 2022 has been a great year for me <laughs> so far. Some of the other cooler items of footwear that I've been seeing are what Adidas has done with the Adidas Samba. And I don't think Adidas has done anything extraordinary with the Adidas Samba. But for whatever reason, a lot of people caught wind of the Adidas Samba as a really reputable, nice, good-looking sneaker. And it kind of took on a life of its own. From the Wales Bonner pairs, which seem to be this kind of gold standard for the Adidas samba just to the regular gr adidas samba pairs that are really clean and a lot, i see a lot of i see a lot of menswear and women's wear styling when it comes to the adidas samba which i think is beautiful last footwear brand i want to touch on we have to talk about solomon i think the xt6 has been a fantastic silhouette i was a bit skeptical i don't own a pair personally but i think that the more i see solomon footwear come out the more i like it from the pro advanced pairs to the xt6 i believe that's how you I believe those are the pairs that i like yeah i think i'm saying it right um those pairs are really nice the apricot colorway is beautiful in the xt6 and you know if you're into that kind of aesthetic it's more of an outdoorsy active living aesthetic in 2022 it's kind of this fallout from gorp core which i feel like is kind of going down a bit as well i, I feel like the idea of gorp core has really dwindled towards the second half of the year but i think solomon is still main staple in a lot of people's wardrobe and that still holds that gorpy gorp core-esque good old raisins and peanuts vibe compared to last year when i made this video there are far less complaints and in my opinion in drew joiner's opinion things are as they should be as it relates to fashion at least in my opinion i'm liking what i'm saying next let's work our way up to bottoms we started with footwear let's go up the outfit and talk about our bottoms pause <laughs> <laughs> unlike last year things aren't dominated by one particular brand last year i talked a lot about how carhartt double knees i talked about dickies i talked about all these kind of workwear pants which were just everywhere if you went on tiktok if you went on social media if you went outside you had a lot of people really talking up these workwear pants in 2022 not really seeing a particular brand or even a particular strong, strong style of pants, pantalones that are dominating the scene. I think in women's wear, which has a different kind of cycle and moment than men's wear, I think in women's wear, there are a lot of women who are still wearing a lot of the workwear items and still dressing in workwear, whether it be wearing Dickies 874 and turning the kind of inside flap inside out. I feel like I see that a lot still. And I still see a lot of guys wearing kind of Carhartt cargo pants, uh, carpenter pants and the likes. So where does that leave us? I think the number one trending pant that I'm seeing in 2022, there's a lot of variants, there's a lot of options, but I think the number one trending pant are the parachute pants. Well, at least on TikTok right now. <laughs> but see, this is why it's kind of tough to talk about trends in 2022. There are so many different micro trends happening. There's, I could talk about bloat core, but I feel like it's such a micro trend. There are other micro trends happening. There are other small communities that are talking about things and kind of a anointing items to be the best items and i'm not always in those communities but maybe i've caught a glimpse of them but i think parachute pants we can all agree that they are a pair of pants that a lot of people have been at least talking about maybe not styling as much and the wider fitting silhouette has dominated 2022 i myself even tried to get a pair of parachute pants 
get a pair of parachute that's a lot of pears man that's a lot of fruit <laughs> i myself try to get a pair of parachute pants one from the brand maharishi which is a uh, great brand the unfortunate truth is that the pants were way way too short for me i'm about six foot three and a lot of times with pants the inseams just do not work that's a conversation for another day but they were nice and i really i would have really loved the fit of them if they would have fit better i'm kind of digressing right now what am i where, am I, where are we going with this? Now, my opinion on parachute pants. I tried to get some. I never really could style it myself, so maybe they're not for me. But I kind of feel indifferent about parachute pants, which may be worse than not liking them because I just don't care. I don't think they're for my body type like I explained before, which is unfortunate. Not many brands are making parachute pants for people over, you know, six foot. To be honest, uh, I, I haven't seen anyone who's above six foot wear a pair of parachute pants. And that's sad. And when I see someone styling a pair of parachute pants, a lot of times it's women, which is funny enough, in, in women's wear. I see a lot more girls and, and women styling parachute pants. And I think their fits look good, but I don't, I don't necessarily go, wow, like that fit is fantastic. And that's probably because I can't see myself wearing parachute pants, especially when, when I'm looking at a woman who is, you know, five foot three wearing a pair of parachute pants like and they're wearing a medium or a large or something like that and it, I, I just I have no hope for myself to actually style it so i go good for you but not for me and that's kind of where i'm at with parachute pants they don't really excite me they don't make me go wow they don't amaze me just kind of indifference but you know for the people who are styling parachute pants a lot of times they are pretty stylish individuals according to popular you know the court of public opinion they for the most part have really good outfits but then again maybe i haven't felt like that wow feeling with the fit pick in a while which is maybe another conversation for another day which is you know how instagram has turned into tiktok 2.0 and how that's caused a bit of outrage for a lot of people next another trend that i feel like really cemented itself in 2022 couture has to be headphones as accessories now aesthetically i can't deny that headphones are pretty interesting when you add them as an outfit element but from a practical standpoint who the was buying 500 dollars airpod maxes just for the fit i i i don't i don't understand that i i can't get down with that i think that if you're going to use headphones as an aesthetic before you use them as a practical function of listening to music or listening to audio, I think that um, you're in the sunken place. <laughs> but, you know, not to, you know, throw too much shade on you folks if you're doing that. They do look cool. They look really, really cool. I think that it's interesting. It's kind of like what happened, you know, earlier in the mid 20 teens with AirPods, just the regular small ones. It's happened before with wired you know, Apple Air plugins. It's always like Apple. I don't know why. Or it's happened with, you know, Beats. A lot of times what you saw in athletics is that people would wear Beats as a way to not only, you know, listen to music, but also look cool, look good before you start to perform an activity, which is, I think it's valid, honestly. I think that's valid, but it has to also come from the standpoint of the practicality of it because $500 for AirPod Maxes is wild. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be eating my words when I buy some AirPod Maxes. Like it's just gonna be the, the comment section is gonna go crazy. <laughs> I like authenticity, so for me, I'm gonna pass on using headphones as an aesthetic. Um, I would never, you know, think to document myself wearing headphones purely for the aesthetic of Instagram or TikTok or anything of that nature. Um, I think it comes off a bit posery, but. A lot of times when it comes to fashion, like we are all attempting to play with different ideas and I can respect someone who's trying to just play with the aesthetic of headphones as an accessory. I can respect it because at least they're trying something new and they're giving their wardrobe and their styling a bit of a different feel. What is the feel? What is the feel of having headphones on as an aesthetic? You look unbothered. You look too cool, you know, to be talked to kind of in a way. But also I think it looks kind of futuristic, like some like retro futurism. Some of them like aren't AirPods Maxes and they're like this like retro futuristic vibe, which is kind of fun. I kind of have two, yeah, I have like two ideas about this. Like one is like, it's cool looking. The other one is, is it practical for the majority of people? Let me know down in the comments. Also, I broke my Beats headphones earlier this year and I am in the market for some headphones. Apple, Sony, Bose, 
<laughs> Hit your boy up. <laughs> In my opinion, the best trend of 2022 has to be the diversification of the styles. I think there's a lot of different styling and different ways people are dressing and, and it's beautiful. I think it's some of the best styling I've ever seen in my life as I've grown up. I always felt like you had to dress, you know, streetwear, you had to dress this kind of avant-garde and people are kind of breaking out of that mold and dressing in so many different ways, creating so many different subgroups and subcategories. My style evolution has kind of also encapsulated that feeling. I've gone from wearing a lot of graphic tees, even though I still wear a lot of graphic tees. This one's from Saint Ivory NYC. It's fire. I'm, I still wear a lot of graphic tees, but to wearing more kind of artisanal stuff, wearing stuff that has a little bit more um, nuance to it. Maybe that's more elevated menswear. And I love that. It's so much fun to be able to explore different aspects and especially for men, especially for menswear and not have to feel so rigid and being perceived as being too feminine or being perceived as being gay or, or anything of that nature. And I think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with those things. But um, for a lot of men, they've also always had to deal with that identity kind of not crisis, but just, oh, if you like fashion, then, you, you know, you're not you're not a straight man, which is absolutely insane. I think people more than ever want others to be individuals and to create and express themselves in an individualistic way. And that's my opinion. And if you think I'm wrong, I don't know why you watched the video up until this point. This is my channel. I'm always right here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> I think the worst trend in 2022 in fashion relates to how pretentious people can be about fashion. I know I talked about how people want people to be more open and be more inclusive and be more self-expressive, but I still think you have a ton, and I do mean a ton, of pretentious, above-it-all individuals who try to look down at others and try to judge them based on how they wear, their opinions on certain pieces, and their outlook on the fashion industry. Industry. I will die on the horse of inclusivity, positivity, and pushing people to dress as the most truer version of themselves in a very uplifting and inviting way. I'm not going to put people down because of how they dressed. The world is full of mean, selfish, unhelpful people. We all see it all the time. And the fashion community seems to have its fair share of those individuals. Here's what another fantastic creator, the Fashion Archive, I believe his first name is Ao, or I've actually never talked to the guy, but the Fashion Archive, this is what he said about this idea. Everyone in fashion tries so hard to try and like prove that they know more than everyone else. And they don't do it in a way where they're trying to teach you. They do it in a way where they're trying to put you down to make themselves feel better. And people in fashion are so toxic in that way. Like when I, I remember when I first got into fashion, I thought it would be like everything else I've been into. Like the basketball teams I played for, everyone just wanted to help each other. We would like wake each other up really early to go train in the morning and motivate each other and hold each other accountable, like, oh, you're not supposed to be eating that chocolate bar because that's going to affect your performance. That was the sort of camaraderie that, like, basketball players had when I was younger. The same thing in athletics. It was, like, waking each other up to go for, like, 4 a.m. jogs in the morning to keep fit, all that sort of stuff. Or when I used to skateboard, and even if you land, like, the most basic tricks, like, you just do your first ollie, you have people who can do literally 540s, clapping and really encouraging you like yeah you just landed your first ollie type of thing and so when I got into fashion because that was my experience of just like when you're into something those are how the communities are when I got into fashion and I was reading about fashion I thought it would be like things that I didn't know people would lead me in the right direction and sort of help me and you know tell me oh if you read that you might learn about it and it just wasn't like that fashion is the only industry where the people everyone's just like you're so dumb how do you not know this you're dumb how do you not know that like everyone just thinks they're so smart and it's just so annoying like i hate it what did i miss let me know down in the comments i'm curious to know what you guys feel about this video i want this video to be kind of like an annual thing i posted it almost exactly a year ago to the week last year for 2021 hopefully i have some more exciting things to talk about in 2023 as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2022. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you, wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Abianto. Peace, boy. Yo, what is good, post vid vid? Your boy is playing around with microphones again. He's getting back into his creative energy, man. 
here's a fist bump for the one time bop you know here's another one for the one time bop gotta reach under the mic arm man this is ridiculous i got one question for you pvv one question we're gonna skip to one song one song only i got one question for you what is the funniest tv show you've seen i need to watch like a funny tv show like it just funny tv shows bring so much just good vibes to your life some of my favorite funny tv shows include boondocks and i wrote down the office boondocks i don't know if you know about boondocks hilarious the office is more mainstream but let me know the tv shows that you're watching down in the comments see y'all later got love for y'all peace